We've all agreed with the government not to tell folks about new Ebola cases. That is huge news. Even if Ebola is not a threat, which I think it is, the level of control is simply amazing. And so I want to go through the first three runners up. They will get a big InfoWars grab bag of T-shirts, InfoWarsLife.com, supplements, and more. Six, five, and four, the runners up will all uh, get that. But the real win is just exposing tyranny and exposing the Ebola non-response. And then we'll go uh, in order the third place winner who gets 500 bucks and a grab bag, the second place winner that gets $2,000 in a grab bag, and uh, the first place winner who gets $5,000. And that's just to make it fun. The very successful contest all over national TV, local TV, newspapers reported on many of these winners. Uh, they're all amazing folks, but the big thing is they got off the bench and got in the game. So we salute everyone that entered the contest. We will post the top six uh, runners up to Infowars.com uh, along with the top three winners. But without further ado, uh, let's go to the audio and video uh, of number six. Number six, uh, the uh, first uh, runner up uh, here in the contest of the Ebola contest winners. Ebola Goes Digital by Mad Unicorn Games. Hello, America. I'm Moses. This is Noah. And we're Mad Unicorn Games. And we want to let you know that in our game, Radical Heroes Crimson City Crisis, we've retrofitted it to have InfoWars and Ebola posters and banners. So tell me again, Noah, what can we do as Americans to stand up against the globalist agenda? InfoWars.com. Support them. All right. Uh, that's the first runner-up. Next runner-up. Number five, Ebola visits Skull and Bones by As Knowledge. Yes, Great job. Yes, speaking out, calling for more to be done to stop Ebola at its point of origin. Here's the hard truth. In West Africa, Ebola is now an epidemic uh, of the likes that we have not seen before. It's spiraling out of control. It is getting worse. It's spreading He's faster at Skull and Bones. exponentially. Today, thousands of people in West Africa are infected. That number could rapidly grow to tens of thousands. And if the... All right, number four, spreading liberty in the den of criminals by Mona Hine. Great Got job. little posters or whatever like that, and I'm going to put it all over town. I'm going to be in D.C., out of D.C., around D.C., and I want everybody to see this. This is Ebola, Obama, hot flights from the hot zone now. Tyranny is the disease. Help expose it. Yes, yeah, secure the borders and get the word out there and watch your girl go because I'm on a mission right now because at the end of the day, if anything falls, if everything goes down the hole, at least I can say I fought for the good cause and I am the resistance. Number three. This is third place. The Truth is Viral by John Anonymous. Posted posters everywhere. The truth is viral is third place. Number two, second place. Obama spreads Ebola awareness in Chicago land. It's got a lot of attention. Well, you win two thousand dollars, but you really got the national attention to this. And first place, five thousand dollars, going postal. You've got Ebola mail by C. Fig. Good morning. It's about ten after ten a.m. Uh, October twenty fourth, two thousand fourteen, and I am in my mail truck, and I am about to start delivering. Here are all the stacks of the Obama flyers that I made. I made 550 of them to cover the entire route. This is the mail lady, the mail woman, delivering flyers, but she paid for it herself, so it's legal. She's got a right to use the mail like anybody else does. She wants five grand. 
Again, these videos are all on InfoWars.com. Congratulations to all who participated. Great job. Round of applause to everybody. Uh, and, you know, I like this contest because we did it in a month. We had a quick turnaround, and I was only a week late or a little less than a week late in making the announcement. Sometimes I'm like two months late on that $100,000 contest because there were like 600 videos, and most of them were really good, and I just couldn't decide the winner. Now, the crew pretty much unanimously agreed that Going Postal was the winner. I couldn't decide. I thought it was either first or second place, I'll be honest. So I said, put a poll up and see what the uh, listeners think at InfoWars.com. And we sent an email out with a poll as well. And both on the website and in the email poll, which video do you think should win? Going Postal, 28%. Obama spreads uh, Ebola awareness, 27%. Truth is viral, 19%. Spreading liberty in the den of criminals, 12%. Ebola visits skull and bones, 9%. Ebola goes digital, 5%. So the the votes, at least in the first uh, th three winning places, were right in line with us. So we picked the winners, but sometimes we crowdsource when we can't decide. So everybody pretty much picked uh, those winners. We spend $7,500, get massive, probably $500,000 worth of promotion to InfoWars.com. The people that all do it get promotion on their own websites. But most importantly, it's about promoting liberty and truth and the people getting involved and taking action. So wonderful job. Everybody that entered the contest, a big winner. And, you know, I had a surplus of like $100,000 a few years ago uh, because we try to make more money to put it back into the operation. That's why we've grown. That's our main goal. And so I said, we'll have a $100,000 contest. And that was really a doozy. Uh, but quite frankly, $7,000 contests are just as successful. Uh, we don't have the budget for that right now. Uh, people have been asking, when there's, is there going to be another $100,000 contest? Uh, probably never, uh, just because uh, I don't want to try to run this operation, just try to raise that type of capital. I want to just get it up to a certain point, get three or four more reporters, a couple more camera people, a few more writers, and kind of stay at that level. <clears throat> just because I can't manage it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to develop a system where we can do that. And then people that enter contest can end up being auxiliary reporters who I'd like to pay. Uh, but again, it becomes a whole chicken or the egg thing where I can't spend all my time and energy just raising money and then managing people to try to have reporters on the ground. W what we need is folks just to go out and be reporters, citizen journalists, file your reports to YouTube, authorize us to use the clips in all or a portion of so that we can then all synergistically with human intelligence crowdsourced overthrow the dinosaur media uh what's left of it and that is certainly beginning to happen i don't mean to sycophantically quote matt drudge so much just the things he said 15 years ago 10 years ago a year ago are so true so short and succinct you as a blogger or a person with a camera and a facebook or a twitter or a youtube channel or a local radio show are just as important as the new york times in fact we know they get caught lying all the time, so you're more important than them. And now what you report can instantly be picked up by others. And so get out there and kick some New World Order tail. But that means when you see a citizen helping an old lady, not just a cop, might be a cop, show that. Or when you see cops doing something bad, show it. When a cop walks up to Joe Biggs for no reason and says, I will effing kill you and points a shotgun at him because Joe's there with a the camera filming stuff, that cop got relieved. I think he's getting fired. That's good. You don't need a hothead, crazy person, in my opinion, uh, you know, in the um, police department acting like that. That is momentary insanity, in my view, and needs to be psychologically evaluated. Do I want to get a cop fired? No, but do I want my reporter dead? Can survive Afghanistan and Iraq? Getting blown up repeatedly? But... Can't survive Ferguson? I had to pull my reporters out. The cops were acting so bad. And by the way, a lot of the protesters were acting bad too. That was what was sick. We had protesters doing stuff to us, cops doing stuff to us. It was a shameful situation. And the cops were acting like that because they couldn't release the investigation information yet, which I disagree with. And it turned out the cops told the truth about what happened. Ferguson, they're saying when the Word comes out, of course, on whether they're going to indict the police officer or not, that, that St. Louis, not just Ferguson, may burn. 
I know this. Nobody better come around my house trying to burn something during it. I mean, burning down houses or businesses doesn't do anything for a youth that's been shot. It's just a disgusting situation. Now, L.A. riots with Rodney King is what should be expected to happen in Ferguson. Evidence and justice, irrelevant and politically charged case. Infowars.com. A law professor in Indiana is predicting a repeat of the Rodney King riots that wrecked Los Angeles. If Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson is not brought up on charges. But if he was attacked and charged by someone obviously on something... And, and that most witnesses, including black witnesses, said that, and now it's come out in court. I mean, do, do we just lynch the cop just so people don't burn stuff down? It's a mess. And when the economy unravels, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get to that now and then to your calls and a guest that's coming up. Katie Barr, The Door. And I mentioned economist Martin Armstrong in the last hour, article on Infowars.com. Financial collapse will cause civil unrest, revolution, civil war, whatever you want to call it. This is being organized. And all of us are going to lose our standard of living and our freedom in this. I don't care if you're a black man, a white man, a Hispanic woman, an Asian woman, a, a, a an American Indian, uh, Native American, uh, a firefighter, a school teacher. This new world order is bad for freedom, bad for business, bad for life. And it is organizing a worldwide collapse that it's going to roll the police state out as the solution of the collapse that they pull the trigger on. So the reason I keep harping on this is the plan is clear in the movies, the TV, the preparation, the actual training, the secret documents we've gotten and made national news with. I say that because I say secret documents and I see on the YouTube. Where are they? Show them to us. Uh, New York Times, Washington Post had to report on it. We broke the mic. We broke the Homeland Security documents. We were given all of them. Go look it up before you say I'm making something up. I have to sit here and source, cite, source, cite just to counter people that say I'm lying. Sometimes I think I shouldn't even do that because it just takes up all the time. If I've already sourced something a hundred times before, maybe I just shouldn't every time come back with it. The number one enemy is gun owners, returning veterans, Christians, conservatives, libertarians, constitutionalists. In all the government reports, I played a clip of Napolitano apologizing for it earlier. At 10 after, the clip played. That's where she said it. That cue it up again in that Captain America intro. Because I still go on other shows and they go, you claim the government's training to take on veterans. I don't claim jack squat. Don't make it about me. Face what's in the documents. Face what's in the training. They don't train to fight Al-Qaeda. They train to fight gun owners in a civil war. That's the battle plan. And how will they launch it? They'll blow stuff up. It's even come out in Democrat memos. It's even been on Fox News. They're going to blow up stuff and blame it on us. And you know who they're going to blame. Who do they blame every time? Talk radio. And who's at the top of the list? Alex Jones. With Oklahoma City that was as funny as a $3 bill. Who'd they blame? Who'd they blame? Rush Limbaugh. Within 25 minutes, Bill Clinton came out and said Rush Limbaugh's fault. What did Rush Limbaugh have to do with Tim McVeigh with a bunch of other people in a government operation blowing that building up? I've interviewed the police who were there and who saw the feds. And the feds came in their office and said, I'm going to kill you and your wife if you don't shut up. And they did kill cop of the year who wouldn't shut up. I've had cops on this show like Don Browning, who was highly decorated Marine in Vietnam, head of the canine unit. And when I said, go ahead and say the names who threatened you, he turned white on air, gutted up, stuck his chest out and said the guy's name. And you know, say, I mean, do you understand the world we actually live in here? Do you understand how real this is? Do you understand they could come after me at any time? Do you understand? And the fact that we're on air shows there is still a lot of freedom out here. Oh, oh yeah, here's Napolitano. We'll go to break. Here it is. Here she is. About, so I'm going to ask you about it. And that's this uh, right-wing extremism report that... Uh, was mailed out to law, all law enforcement officials in the United States. Uh, I've apologized for that report. Uh, it was not authorized to be distributed. This is a freedom. This is fear. Shield takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. 
And again, we know the names of who planted the bombs. We have the hotel receipts. We have the witnesses that saw them planting the explosives. We got news. We're on the march. We're taking the bombs out. The